Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, televiewers of STV, and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English News Cast. Schools have officially resumed this Monday, January 8, 2017, for the second term of the 2017-2018 academic year in the country. In some parts of the Northwest region, Mezam in particular, schools with some schools weakness and encouraging turnout of students this Monday and classes are going on hitch free. The national chairman of the Social Democratic Front party Ni John Fun says only dialogue will put an end to the ongoing crisis in the northwest and southwest regions. He is reacting to the arrest of Seseko Ayoktabe and Co. in Nigeria over the weekend. Good afternoon once more and thanks for joining us on this edition of the News on STV. And the first we And we can stand that news, this newscast in education and we take you over to the Northwest region where schools have effectively resumed in some parts of this uh, region, especially in Mizam. And our Northwest correspondent there see uh, some schools have witnessed a massive uh, turnout of uh, students this Monday, January 8th. We shall be having images in the course of this newscast and in our subsequent editions of the news at 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. respectively. Back here in Douala, the second term of the 2017-2018 academic year has effectively kicked off with huge turnout recorded in some secondary schools in the city. As early as 7 a.m., students answered present at the school premises at Lycée Technique d'Aqua and Lycée d'Aqua with a call for them to remain focused in their studies. Details with John Possama. The festive celebrations are over and as early as 7 a.m. this Monday morning, students could be seen on the streets of Douala rushing to their various institutions. At Lisey Dakwa here in the economic capital, thorough checks were carried out on the students before access granted to the campus where they were called upon by the administrative staff to be steadfast with their studies this second term, which is the shortest and punctuated with lots of public holidays. Of this term, I told my children to, to work more. Because this term is very important for, I don't I, I think that the, the first term is not important, but, but this term is important because the teacher works very much and we are, we are preparing the, the exams. Classes immediately kicked off with no time to spare, others took the practical works. I recommend them to do their homeworks. Because every time the teacher come and see me and tell me that they don't do their homeworks and it is very, very bad because when the, the children don't do their homeworks, he is outside and it is, uh, it is not good. Meanwhile, at the say Technique Dakwa, it was business as usual with the arrival of student teachers who will be dispatched to the classrooms to continue impacting knowledge on the younger ones. The first is like mentioned at the start of this newscast, the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front Party, Nijon Fundi, has insisted that only dialogue will put an end to the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest region. Nijon Fundi was reacting to the arrest of Seseko Ayoktabe and Co. over the weekend in Nigeria. Let's listen to him. Cameroon is a, a state. Cameroon is a state. All these two states have a common understanding. I know that during the Nigerian Biafran War, Cameroon supported uh, the government of Nigeria. And I think if there's anything in Cameroon that's going to destabilize the government of Cameroon, Nigeria will be willing to give a helping hand. 
But what I do not understand in this is whether the leadership of the Anglophones that was in exile doing what they were doing, did they uh, write to the government of Nigeria, to the foreign minister, to say that we've been driven out of our country, we are at the moment staying in Nigeria? I thought that dialogue was going to be given a chance. I thought it was going to extend the olive leaf to say, please, it's our country, let's see. And if he had extended this invitation for him to come back home, let us be, and they do not come, then to me he can go ahead to arrest the people outside, wherever they may be. But we stay in the Northwest region to talk about uh, the first uh, security meeting for the year 2018 of the region, which took place over the weekend in Kambe. The meeting aimed at ensuring peace in the region ahead of 2018 elections. It is with Robert Mbe. The first 2018 Regional Administrative Coordination Meeting for Security has taken place in the Northwest region. The two security meetings that took place in Kambe and Dunga Mantung Division is geared towards ensuring normalcy returns to the Northwest region in the political, economic, and social domain. To the Governor of the Northwest region, Adolf Lili Lafrik, who chaired the meeting, the security meeting took place in Dunga Mantung because it is a border division and it's a of protection in terms of security due to the crisis. I would like uh, to confirm that uh, we are chairing this meeting here in Kambe after the address of the head of state to the nation who have come back uh, to the guideline that will lead our action during this year. We are first of all to mobilize all the stakeholders to reinforce we're coming back to real normal in the Northwest region, in the social, economic, political, and security domain. We have met with all the stakeholders here, and uh, they have committed themselves to be up to the expectation of not only the head of state, the government, but also to the expectation of the population of the Northwest region who are eagerly expecting the normalcy to come back in the region. I have therefore instructed the administrative authorities, the regional head of services, to neglect nothing in their various field of action. The security meeting will also enable the stakeholders to evaluate the just ended year and plan properly for 2018 so as to avoid the mistakes of the previous year. Given that 2018 is an election year in Cameroon and the Northwest region is not stable at the moment due to the Anglophone crisis, the stakeholders have promised to ensure that elections take place in the Northwest region peacefully. The security meeting was attended by senior divisional officers in the Northwest region, regional delegates, and military officials. Southwest region, the senior divisional officer for the Indian division has called on councillors of the Bamso Council to make sure that uh, the major projects of the councils are realized before the end of their mandate. Eta Ashubokaya was speaking recently during the council's budget recession. Daniela Neba and Marcel Itoy with the details. Municipal councillors of the Bamusor Council have been called upon to join their council executive and use the last few months before elections to realize important projects in their council area so as to stand the chance to be re-elected for another mandate. The call was made by the senior divisional officer from Zian during the ordinary session of the council to deliberate and adopt the 2018 budget at the Bamuso Council Chambers. The mayor in her address said the 2018 budget balanced in revenue and expenditure stands at a sum of 650 million francs CFA representing 13.33% drop. She said the drop is as a result of the ongoing anglophone crisis that has made most business persons to evade tax payment. Mrs. Grace Etungo noted that the budget has been drawn taking into account 
out the mobilized resources of the Council for the year and those of their technical partners. Mr. Eta Ashubokaya appreciated the Council's executive for having dropped the budget and make it more realistic this year. He encouraged the councillors to follow up the payment of council taxes, as without that, nothing can be achieved. The SDO further called the mayor to pay the five-month salaries of workers in order to motivate them to perform well. We stay in the Bamsu subdivision where municipal authorities and traders of the trade by butter market at Mboa Bakundu have lamented the bad nature of the awards. Daniela Neba once again. The long-awaited dream of traders of the famous colonial days exchange market known as Streets by butter market at Mboa Bakundu Beach to see a market constructed for them has been shattered as a result of the bad nature of roads. The said dream, according to inhabitants, might not come to pass since the council's effort three years ago to construct the first ever shaded market has been considered a waste because of bad roads. But no vehicle, no bike can go down there. Yeah. So yeah, that, the reason why we are not using that market is a way for now. The situation that the council held the government responsible for not working on the three kilometers of roads they considered a government road and also stopping the council from doing anything to improve on the nature of the road over seven years ago. Mayor Etungo said after several applies to the government to inform them of the importance of the roads to the population of the subdivision, she however succeeded to have an authorization this year to open the road. This, according to her, will be possible only during the dry season. The people from the maritime bring fish, while those from the mainland bring food stuff, and it's sort of a trade by part, even though they sell other goods. The market, the new market that we have built, is not very much in use because the road leading to the market is not very good and so it took us some time to at least have an authorization because that is an, a national road and municipalities or councils are not supposed to repair uh, uh, national roads. Boar Street by Bata Beach Market is among the few left in the colonial practice of exchange of goods that needs to be protected for posterity. Sport football in this newscast in view of the 2019 African Cup of Nations in the country. Cameroon is visibly speeding up preparations as far as infrastructures are concerned with works advancing at the Japoma Stadium and Olembe Stadium. In the upcoming report, on Paul Sama looks at the state of of infrastructures and access Cameroon's preparedness ahead of the first CAF visiting mission to the country. Following the appointment of an audit firm by the Confederation of African Football, the first inspection visit is expected in the country for 21 days from January 11th to the 23rd to see the country's preparedness ahead of AFCON 2019 with all the various dispositions which have been put in place by the government of Cameroon months to the kickoff of Africa's biggest football jamboree. The visiting mission from CAF will have a lot on their hands as the country can boast of a couple of infrastructures to make the stay of the participating teams a memorable one. First and foremost, Cameroon has seven airports, three of them conform to international norms with a plus being internal flights within the country. As far as stadiums are concerned, Cameroon has seven stadia, two of them which are under heavy construction at Japoma in Douala by a Turkish firm expected to be delivered on time. We are going to double the manpower and machinery. Now, for the time being, we are working 24 hours, day and night, and Saturdays and Sundays. We are now making holidays, so we are going to catch the, uh, what is lost in the past. What we have did uh, up to this time is most hardest part of the stadium is the piles. We are concentrating on the west side of the stadium. This is the most complicated part. We will finish all the concrete work end of March and we will start putting the precast elements. Those precast elements now already started uh, manufacturing in Turkey. They 
They will be here uh, at the end of March in April. An Olimbi in Yaoundé where the prefabricated materials for the 60,000 capacity stadium arrived to the country this January, plus a couple of other stadiums and training pitches which are undergoing renovation works with so many cities to play host to the continent's finest footballers and fans the country can boast of the presence of top hotels and the road networks in most host cities are up to standard even though some works are currently ongoing to upgrade the road network situation in cameroon in the communication domain cameroon has four mobile communication companies internet connectivity as well as leisure sites for the visiting delegations. Cameroon is also required to have at least 20 high-definition cameras for quality transmission and production. Still in sport, Cameroon's participation in different competitions this 2017 can be given a score of 6 on 10. This is thanks to their victory at the 2017 AFCON in Gabon and their triumph at the 2017 Africa Women's Volleyball Championship. But how was their performances in other sports disciplines in 2017? Henry Wana. A critical look at the report card of Cameroon's sporting domain for the year 2017, one is tempted to score their representation 6 on 10. In what would have been termed the worst Cameroon team in a generation, miraculously, is now the best in a generation for the boys of Hugo Bros to have triumphed the 2017 AFCON expedition after 15 years was indeed a brighter beginning for better days ahead in the King's sport for 2017. However, being African champion, much was expected from the squad at the FIFA 2017 Confederations Cup. Soccer fans, 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia was another hard knock. The indomitable house of Cameroon experienced in 2017, which saw them field to clinch their participation ticket. The Cameroon national women's volleyball team gave pride to the fatherland in 2017 after beating Kenya 3 sets to 0 at the Women's African Volleyball Championship International Robotic Competition in USA. Cameroon came out 43rd with its team of four students, which shows a clear testimony that students trained in Cameroon can stand in front of those from developed countries such as France and Canada and compete internationally. Nevertheless, Cameroon Sessifoot Lions failed to attend the 2017 African Sessifoot Cup of Nations, which held in Kedvet due to financial difficulties and neglect from the part of sport authorities who pay very little attention in the discipline. From the World Championship in athletic stage in London to the fourth Islamic Solidarity Games in Baku, Azerbaijan, the Francophonic Games that took place in Côte d'Ivoire and the first African Judo Open in Cameroon. Cameroonian athletes represented the country, though very few medals were brought back home. Kamzong Abesolo, captain of SNH Velo Club, a match overall winner of the 2017 Chantabia Grand Prix Cycling Tour. UMS Dolum, Young Sport Academy, Apeje Zonfu and Kotospor of Garwa took turns to represent Cameroon at continental levels, but they all left the scene earlier because of their poor resort recorded. Hope continued to loom in the horizon that someday, a part of football, Cameroon will stand tall, be it in Africa or the world, for a remarkable performance in other sport disciplines. And it is on that report that we put an end to this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Thanks very much for watching. And of course, stay in the company of our programs as we have more information and entertainment installed. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching.